Oh, and why don't I press play on that uh, yes. tape player? Okay. So uh, state your name, purpose, and a <laughs> social security number. Oh. I, can't, I can't give that out in the air. I can give my name, though. Okay. This is Ted who, Mills. Who are you? Ted Mills. Ted I'm, Mills. Uh, Ted and Mills. the director, the writer, the editor, and the, the getting togetherer of the film, Nowhere Land, to okay. be screening. This Friday, right? This Friday at Ivy Theater. At Ivy Theater. So why don't you uh, tell us a little about yourself and Nowhereland? I hate you're like sitting behind me, and I hate not being able to see you. I'm talking to you. It's really weird. Well, you know, not what having I look that like. eye, can't, eye contact. So uh, uh, I'm going to mentally visualize okay. my eyes in the back of your Just head. Close your eyes okay. and think. Man with glasses, short Man hair. Man with glasses, short Red hair. Shirt. Okay. Talking That's to enough. me. Okay. <laughs> Um, I'm, w- I'm actually was born here. I'm, I'm a rarity. A apparently, rarity. I am Santa Barbara born, uh, but I did spend time in other countries, being Such England, as? Okay, England, England for high school. High school. And uh, I went to UCSB. And I did actually, you film? I did not do film. I did. did uh, I did English. That English. was my. That was my major, with creative writing as a as a sub. Ah, major so or that's a, where your writing what, what, comes in. wasn't really a, a minor. It was a a bent, I guess is what they a called bent. it. A, what is that? A, a bent. Uh, you just specialized in it if you wanted to. You didn't have uh, to take a certain amount of courses if you took creative writing courses. I don't know yeah. if they still do that, but that's. I don't what, think they still do that. That's what I did, and uh, then I went to Japan okay. for two and a half years to do what? Uh, teach English. Oh wasn't really teaching but uh hanging out hanging out With and uh being a, a cultural representative of america <laughs> which, <laughs> which i i never thought of my, i never <laughs> thought of myself as that uh and and i saved up enough money from working there uh decided i don't want to teach english for the rest of my life i came back here and uh, although i didn't have the idea at the time i i eventually spent most of all that money making nowhere land was Which, it pretty costly? Uh, yeah, it wasn't just me. I had some some help from friends and family, as, as we nice. all do. But but some sponsors. Uh, yeah, and but but that nest egg was pretty much taken up with with that film. So you started it in 1997, is that? Correct? 1997, yes. It was uh, just completed in 2000. In 2000. 2000. Yes, it took a long time. So how I, long is it? It's 32 minutes. 32 minutes. But it's heavily compacted. Three compact- years. Heav- wow. <laughs> it's heavily compacted. Okay. Was that you, something like you you started working on and then you like took a couple months off from working on it? It it, it went like uh, in the summer of 97, I, I wrote it. Uh, I s- got people together in October of 97. I started filming it in around... Um, I think May of 98 is when we actually stopped filming because we were filming on and off on weekends and and then we get the footage back and I decide to add something or what what have you yeah. and and then post production took ages I didn't know whether I, was, I I didn't want to edit it at first and uh, when it turned out that I could not get people to edit it for me I wound up doing that doing it yourself yeah I very do it myself so I learned a lot of things by doing the film. I always find, you know, it's easier to do it yourself. Otherwise, it probably will not get done. That, that's true. Oh, I think someone is wanting, um, to, wanting to come in. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's hard because filmmaking is is collaborative, and there are certain things which you just can't do. And and one of those things is the music. I have no, I love music, but I have no music making bones in my body Uh, Uh, and so eventually I I hooked up with Jeff Kaiser who is a Ventura based musician and he did the soundtrack and it's a great soundtrack yeah I know we'll we'll play it in fact why don't we play it right now sorry to interrupt and that way I can let that person in and we'll do like a nice little transition there we'll play the soundtrack what is it like 15 minutes well, we'll play the first track. The first track, which is you know, I don't know if this is even broken down on tracks on this. I think I think it is. Yeah, it, it is. It okay. is. <laughs> All right, we'll we'll put this on and we'll be right back. Okay. With Ted Mills.
Okay, I'm back with Ted Mills. This is Auto Destruct on KCSB 91.9 FM in Santa Barbara. Good evening. What were we talking about? I have no idea. We, uh, train of thought. We were talking about how, how Jeff Kaiser Jeff Kaiser got involved in the project. Um, I think this was Jeff Kaiser's first real soundtrack. He had worked on... But he has some CDs out, isn't he? He has correct? some CDs out, yeah. He has several CDs. His, his label is called uh, PF Mentum, which is... Uh, PF does he do a lot of experimental jazz? Yes, he does. Okay, I yes. remember hearing that name. That There's stuff fun. at the station. He usually gets uh, stolen. <laughs> uh, really? <laughs> um, the, the, uh, the website is pfmentum, M-E-N-T-U-M dot com. And uh, I, I think there's also an uh, mp3.com page with him. Uh, I guess if you just go to mp3.com and put in Jeff Kaiser, you can, you can hear this soundtrack and you can hear excerpts from his other works he's a uh, uh, plays it's trumpet free and jazz or it's it's avant-garde jazz and it's lots of noise so if you're into nice. noise uh especially you'll like jeff kaiser i guarantee it as and say. he's gonna be playing this friday is that he correct? will be playing yes he, he he did the soundtrack and when i mentioned that we were going to have uh, another show because the first show was in september at the center stage theater when i mentioned that we're going to have the show at the ivy theater uh, he said, let me do a live performance. And I said, sure. Cool. That would be nice. Is he going to be uh, performing music from your movie? Or no. Or it'll be just his own? No, he's doing a uh, a, a live improvisational piece. By uh, himself? Or is well, yeah, just with himself. He's a self-contained unit. It's it's him, his trumpet, and a whole bunch of effects box boxes, which are he will manipulate the sounds. And I, I, I've heard him do this. He did this at the Headless Household concert, the Christmas concert in December. And it, it doesn't sound like a trumpet, I'll tell you no. that. No, no. So he really manipulates uh, the bejesus out of it. Nice. So with your film, um, this is live action, right? This is an animation? Yeah, this, is, this is live action. Uh, to give you a... I probably need to tell the story to get people Did interested. You, and you wrote this? I wrote this. I wrote this. Uh, I used to go to... <laughs> I used to go to a coffee shop. This is a bit of a cliche, but I would go to this coffee shop because it was the only place I could really collect my thoughts. And it wasn't a very uh, well-populated coffee shop, so I wasn't going to pose, you know. Um, And I would get like three hits of espresso, and then I just write, and I just let the ideas come out, and they did. And... uh, and I would write on, I I'd draw it because I want it to be, I want it to be silent. I had a, a so a, there's a, no dialogue. In there is dialogue, but dialogue. it's not understandable. It's it's like those Eastern European cartoons. Okay, where they, <laughs> I haven't they, seen any. I don't think. Uh, well, you know, they 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 blather and talk in a nonsense language. Uh, okay. Uh, so they do communicate, but it's it's the action which is telling you the story. And uh, just to sum up the story, because I'm always sending this out to film festivals, the the. Um, the line that I write is a, a worker on a distant planet must choose between love and duty in this post Orwellian tale. Hmm. Mm, that's, I've kind of boiled it down to its Hollywood kind of pitch line. Yeah. Uh, it looks like a film from the Soviet bloc in the 50s, I like to think, or an old Twilight Zone, as some people say. And I is have it s- color or black and white? It's black and white. Black and white. Okay. I, I, I figure if you're going to start off your filmmaking career you might as well start off with a black and white black and because white is always good the you know the the chances as you progress of using black and white again are are less and less yeah you, you know can, you can't go wrong with that um and it's three guys who work on this planet processing uh satellite information and there's no women allowed on this planet as we discover and one day the 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 our hero, the the lowest guy on the on the rung of the ladder, is uh, takes his usual trip outside to fix satellite dishes or whatever <laughs> he does, uh, and receives a signal from a uh, someone else from another galaxy, Ooh. I guess, and or dimension or what have you, and it's a woman. So that's dun, dun, dun. Da, 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 yeah. Okay. And then that's where the uh, that's where we start. And, nice. and then, you do this all in 32 minutes. And all in 32 minutes. It's very. It, it, some people may think it starts slow, but it, it, it builds. Okay. It, it, it rolls like a snowball. Uh oh. <laughs> snowball effect. <laughs> it is a snowball effect. And uh, things de- do get crazier at the end. 
So. Cool. And this isn't the only film that you have in this film festival, this is that is correct? You, yeah. You're kicking off the night with Walk Cycle? Walk, Walk Cycle was my second film, although the first to be released, it was done in the downtime between Noah Land's lengthy post-production. Okay. Uh, and this is also live action? That's also live action. It has some of the same people in it, uh, but this is a more uh, friendly film. <laughs> It's a more friendly. In it, what it, way? What do you mean? It's just a humorous film. It's 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 a uh, a, a setup and punchline film, which is popular. And you wrote this as well. I wrote this as well. So you write, direct, produce, edit, a- edit. So you're just like a Renaissance man. I am. Yes. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm well, waiting for some more people to come along and produce me. Oh, with, with more money than I have, but uh, that's that would be the next step. But no, I think writing and and directing is. The main thing. So where did you take your films to be edited? Um, I edit, like most people these days, I wound up editing it on a, a, a home PC yeah. that, that my friend had. Uh, and then I then I took that rough cut to a, a, a post-production house here in, well, in Goleta and, uh-huh. and put it together. Did and you, um, is this shot with a digital video camera? No. Or this, okay. No, this is film. I, I kind of had a fun experience the other day where uh, some uh, some youngster... Some youngster was watching the film and he was just like uh whoa what did you how did you shoot this and i told him it was film and he was he was amazed that anyone shot on film anymore really <laughs> maybe someone the, the, how funny. The, this age and he said well why can you shoot it with a digital camera and put on a film effect uh, and i said well um but no i why not just shoot film I, I guess it's more expensive oh those youngsters those those, those wacky cookie kids. youngsters are going to challenge me to a duel so i guess there's Seven films. Seven films. And I, plus yours, plus your Nowhere Land. Is yeah, that plus right? Nowhere Land. It the the night will go like this. Uh, there will be seven short films by other people. Well, including Walk Cycle, but that's a very short film. So, so yeah, here. How about I run down the list? The g- go ahead and run down the list. So you'll first see Walk Cycle mm-hmm. by Ted Mills, who's here with me tonight. Hello. Mall Town with John Crow, or by John Crow, I guess. Uh, the Hawaiian Adventure. By Ethan Brostet. Brostet. Still Life with Cows by Karen Yazinski. And that's also featuring uh, Miranda July. It doesn't feature, feature Miranda oh, July. It's oh, so she, she is part of that oh, okay. uh, Miranda July uh, nexus. I see. Okay. I see. She's currently collaborating on she, a piece yeah, with Ma- she, Miranda she's July. She's currently working with her, but okay, not. Never mind. I'm just yeah. kidding. Uh, let's see. After that one will be Husky by Brian. Konevsky, is yeah. that how you say that? Brian Konevsky, yeah. Read by Rukayo? Rudiko, Sumi. Oh, right, Sumi, okay. And then Moss Chops by Jim Trainer. Yes. Um, some people who went to the show at the center stage last year uh, will remember films by some of these filmmakers. We're repeating, well, we're repeating Walk Cycle and we're repeating The Hawaiian Adventure by Ethan Brostead. But uh, Jim Trainer's film last time was called Bats, and that was a big hit. But I want to show his new one because that's just as good. So you're this is your deal. You're putting this all on. Yeah, I feel it's kind of too much to ask people to just come and see a 32 minute film. I don't think anyone would want to. So I like to give people uh, the Something bang else. for their buck. Yeah, but and it's a pretty good deal, isn't it? It's like three dollars to go if you're a student. Three dollars for and yeah. Five dollars if you're a community member. You can't really beat that for Friday night, you know. It's really just just more than a, a pack of smokes. You know, and that's two hours of uh, solid, I repeat, solid entertainment. Yeah, and music, live and, music. Yeah, after those seven films, we'll show, uh, we'll show, we'll have a short break, and then we'll have uh, Jeff Kaiser do his live performance, and then we'll go into Nowhere Land to cap the night off. And are you going to be giving a presentation yourself, or? I will stay for a Q&A. Okay. I like the, I like q and I, I you know. And so Nowhere Land, and that that won something. Is, I think I read that. It won <laughs> second place. <laughs> won something. Someone said, how can you be a winner if you got second place? But I got second place, so I won that, didn't I? Yeah. Uh, at the Zoe Online Film Fest uh, for Best Experimental Short. I never really considered it experimental, I guess, because it's, it's narrative. I seem to think experimental is a non-narrative, but... Uh, uh, some people have told me that yes, this is experimental because it's that's you know, it's not traditional um, film. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I you know I underneath it all I think it's a very it, it it has its traditional parts. You know it's not an abstract film or or a, or a, 
you know experiment with color or something it's uh, or or shapes it is telling a story so it's just the way it's told i guess so uh ted not you ted but ted our office manager at kcsb he was telling me that it was kind of a surrealist film uh, do you find it that or i don't know where he came up with that <laughs> well it's yeah well it's surrealist like I guess in, in, in certain ways it, it does open itself up to uh, dream logic and certainly I did when I wrote it um, and there are certain sequences which are dream like whether but that's debatable whether okay. what we're seeing is a dream or reality is is um, one of the things about the film that uh, uh, people come up to me and, and offer interpretations of it this is this is kind of the film I wanted to make that people would come up and <laughs> tell me what they thought the story was and, and, and it's something that applies but nothing that I had in mind Okay. so I, I hope that entices people out <laughs> I'm sure it will yes so go see it Friday night Ivy Theater seven short films plus music plus Nowhere Land for three or five dollars. Yes. What a deal. What and a at deal. Eight o'clock. At, at tickets on sale at the door. You can't get them in advance. Uh, just that's the way it is for those shows. Yeah. Uh, so is this, these are the only two films you have? Walk Cycle and Nowhere Land? N- no, there was an earlier film called Universal Leader, which was uh, done in collaboration with a guy called Gary Tseng and uh, was done for Constance Penley's experimental film uh-huh. class. I was Constance not. I was. Penley. I was not part of her All class. Film majors out there. Yeah, I was not part of her name. class, but uh, uh, he was, and then we collaborated and had some idea. And, and uh, Dave Ladelfa did the uh, soundtrack for that. And Dave okay. wound up being the art director on Nowhere Land, and that was okay. that was years ago. That was back in ninety seven. In ninety seven. But that got into some film festivals. That got into some experimental film fest like uh, uh, Seattle Underground and and some European festivals cool so that kind of gave me the um, the gumption right so what like what made you you get into doing the whole film thing from being an English major just jumping right in there to film had you had any prior experience like did you just pick up a camera one day I I made films when I was a kid I think when I was Super 8. When I was 8, yeah, Super 8. In fact, this was shot on Super 8, although oh, really? yeah, it looks like very uh, grainy um 16 millimeter black and white, but it was actually shot on Super 8. Uh it was transferred with a by a good uh, transfer house called uh Super 8 Sound who handle all the Super 8 of Hollywood. Uh so it looks unlike I I think when you see most Super 8 transfers, they they look very fuzzy and old and kind of crummy and I I think that's some people would say that's the uh, the fault of the medium but I think that's the fault of the transfer house actually. I think that Super 8 can look very crisp and and, and sharp if if someone's treating it right. But does that kind of just add to it if it's Well, yeah, the, it does add it, there is what I mean is it looks less than it that could have been. And when you see No Orlando, it, it it looks sharp. It it has definition. You can see things in the background. It's not just kind of we we treated the Super 8 camera like a real camera. We didn't go la 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 la. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, and I, I, I think that's also why a lot of uh, digital films, like everyone's saying that the, the, the digital camera is great, but you, the digital camera is still a camera, and if you just treat it like it's it's the home video camera, your digital movies will look like crummy home movies. Yeah, that's you know, true. If you, you have to know how to use it. You <laughs> still get that shaky effect. It, well, yeah, if if you want to get this shaky effect. Um, but I think if, I mean, invest in a tripod. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and your look changes. It looks, it looks, you know, it depends what effect you want, really, I guess. But, so uh, is your stuff available on the internet or do you have a website that people can check out? Yes, my website is uh, www.stecky, that's S-T-E-K-K-I dot com. What is Stecky for? Uh, Stecky is for Stecky Dio Productions is the name of my my self-made company. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stecky Dio means it's cool in Japanese. Oh, so are you, are you very influenced by Japanese culture? Um, 
Yes. <laughs> yes. Like, I will not lie. Yes, I am. Yes. Yes. Uh, I love Teshi Gahara, the uh, director who made uh, Woman in the Dunes and, and, and Face of Another and uh, some other some other Isn't films. Something that, else that he did. Some other, some other things. But those are the two main things. And, and uh, again, another director who 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 shot in black and white very nicely. So you, so you think their stuff really comes through in your work? or um, I... On one hand, I'd like to say I hope not. Yeah, I hope not. <laughs> uh, other people have found other things in my in in Nowhereland. Someone you know said, "Oh, German expressionism," but I wasn't consciously thinking of German expressionism. It's a big hodgepodge of of everything that I like. So, so kind of like the Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Yeah, although I've only seen that film, I think what twice at most, twice, mm-hmm. and it wasn't something I grew up with. So I don't think it's exerted uh, a, a, a big influence on me. Um, some people say parts of Nowhereland remind them of Brazil by Terry Gilliam, but again, that wasn't oh, yeah. something I was thinking of consciously when I was making it. And I'm more influenced by uh, non-film sources, such as uh, just like art or in general, art or? and story. You know, the a fiction and and music and. Um, I was, I was going to say adult comic books, but that sounds like porn. <laughs> uh, I mean, okay. uh, uh, alternative later. comics. There porn. you go, alternative okay. comics. Um, uh, all those things came into like Sandman type stuff. Is that um, what you mean? Like, or? like um, I, I like Jim Woodring stuff. Um, I, th- I think he was one of the main things. He's, he's very much influenced of like dream logic and and telling stories simply without dialogue. So I, I guess you could say that Jim Woodring was a big uh, influence. Definitely. So do you think in future films you may incorporate more dialogue and Oh, I hope so. My actors color film My <laughs> my actors keep saying, "When are you going to write me some some dialogue?" I, I just finished a script which I sent off it <laughs> didn't get accepted, but I sent it off to some this one competition that was all talking. So, oh. you know, it's it's um I can do it. It's just that the medium I can accept myself challenges and one of the challenges when I got the camera when I bought the camera which I vowed I have to make a film with this camera <laughs> uh, it cost me 50 whole dollars I've got to make a film that cost me 20,000 <laughs> that's my <laughs> vow uh, was that it, well I couldn't shoot sync sound meaning I, I could oh, not uh, shoot the film and record the sound at the same time and have it come out in sync so I realized well this should be a, a kind of a silent film, film. yeah Yes, mm-hmm. and all the all the sound and talking and whatever should be put on afterwards, and that was one of the challenges. That, yeah, I bet. Um, that wasn't a problem. That was a challenge. So did um, is it Philip Kaiser? That's his name. Oh, uh, Jeff, Jeff Kaiser. Jeff Kaiser. Um, did he see your film and then create a soundtrack for it afterwards, or? Yeah, he was, was not it kind n- of a collaboration <sighs> during the whole film. No, no, process? he was no, no. I had this uh, the this final cut for about five months six months or something like that and then that's when I I was trying to find someone and that's when I approached Jeff Kaiser at the end of 90 99 did you know him beforehand no I had I did not know him beforehand but you were familiar with his work I was familiar with his work because the headless household guys what's that the the, they're another avant guard jazz band in town okay. uh, one of Ventura or no Santa Barbara, Santa they've, Barbara. Been, they've been around for, for about uh, 20 years 15 wow. years something and uh, I had uh, Dick Dunlap do the the music for Wonk Cycle and when I went to go see one of their concerts to talk about that film uh, Jeff Kaiser was also playing with them and then I I thought oh here's here's someone who appreciates uh, electronics and and drones and kind of the things that I wanted to do for the soundtrack so I approached him and we talked and he did the soundtrack very quickly actually nice <laughs> which is something he good. he revealed to me uh uh last time we were talking so on the show efficient about efficient and very efficient very efficient but I mean, we very you know interesting work we sat down, watched it together, and I said, here's kind of the things that I like, and I played him some music, and here's some of the things uh, that I want. And But I didn't want to influence him too much. I just wanted him to go away and come back and have some stuff, and I was happy with pretty much all of it. 
what would happen if you like the first thing he gave you and you didn't like it would you just be like hey you know do it again or I w- yeah no yeah exactly I, I would have step on it I would have been well <laughs> no, I would have been because uh, you come this far and if it's if it's not exactly what you want then you have to say you just can't not say you'll just re- regret the the rest of your life every time you see the film that oh like, you know oh, if I soundtrack. if only I had suggested if only I had done this or if only I'd fixed this so uh, but fortunately he he hit the nail on the head yeah the soundtrack is excellent so uh, maybe that's a good excuse to Should go play, play play another track, track off that? I All would, right. let's see well you know I'd play track two which track is two? the theme yeah. Title. Okay, should we just go in consecutive order there? Yeah, yeah, because right. it, it's a good Here we go, track two off of the Nowhere Land soundtrack. And wait, before we go into track two, yes. will the soundtrack be available? Yes, yes. I, on the night, we'll be, sh- uh, we're we're real, you know, just capitalists at heart, and we'll be sh- uh, Isn't selling. Isn't everyone, though? Yeah, aren't we Whoever all? Whoever denies that. There we are. I'm saving up my SUV. <laughs> uh, no, we'll be... Uh, We'll be selling the soundtrack and and uh, a T-shirt and and a book. This, is a, this book? is a pretty My cool book. Gosh. I'm telling you, yeah, we got a book. And Jeff Kaiser c- CDs will be there, okay. and possibly uh, some other stuff from the other filmmakers. Okay, cool. Uh, if it gets to me in time. So. All right. So here's track two, Nowhere Land.
we're back in the studio here. Hello. Ted Mills. The director, producer, writer, editor of Nowhere Land, which will be this Friday night at Ivy Theater, along with seven other short films and Jeff Kaiser. Playing live. Playing live. For fans of Jeff Kaiser. And for, for possibly new fans of Jeff Kaiser after that performance. Yes. Um, he, and he's not taping this performance. He's just offering it out into the uh, the ether for. Uh, Does he tape most of his performances? No, he doesn't. No. It's just it's it exists for that moment. That's <laughs> right, because he just it's all just it's improvisational. Imp- it's improvisational. I think taping it defeats the purpose. Well, that's what he would say anyway. Okay. I would say tape it, tape it, archive everything. <laughs> I, I I will just back up and say I'm not uh, although. A lot of my You're money capitalist. went into the yeah. <laughs> when I was saying yes, I'm a capitalist. Although a lot of my money went into this, the, the producers are actually uh, uh, Drew Sturdivant, who is the uh, producer and general dog's body on the show, and uh, Scott Easley, who was my executive producer, who came through at the uh, uh, what do you call it, eleventh hour, and provided that extra cash injection to get the damn thing finished, as he said. Get the damn thing finished. Because he was tired of hearing me say, oh, I don't have this, I don't have that. <laughs> All right, so here's a question for you. Yes. Let's just pretend that Universal Studios, uh, uh, motion pictures, came up to you and was like, man, Nowhere Land rocks. We <laughs> want to buy your script, buy your film from you, and we want to make this into a feature-length film. Would you Would you do it? Would you sell out? Would I, uh, would, or you want to stay the like underground? Would I? Would I get to um, direct it, redirect it again? Is that no? Uh, Steven you, Spiel, okay. Steven <laughs> Spielberg <laughs> wants to do it. I'm just, I don't even know if he's on Universal. Um, oh, who knows? Whatever the thing is. So your question is whether I would give up the right if I'd sell the rights to it so they could remake it into a steaming pile of. Turd. But I mean, of course, you'd be making like a huge percentage. Of oh, that, I'd be making. Oh, right? uh, yeah, sure. That I you would you would do it that I would because it would be like um, to you know not get above my station but it would be like uh, uh, Chris Marker selling the rights of his uh, brilliant short film La Jetée uh, to uh, to Terry Gilliam to make the uh, Bruce Willis uh, Brad Pitt uh, Twelve Monkeys and uh. uh, you know his his work is untouched and uh, they remade it I, although I like Twelve Monkeys it's not a not a uh, a shade on uh, on La Jetée, which is one of my favorites. I guess that you could say that's also a, a, a influence on this film. Okay, so what if you were asked to direct it? Oh no. <laughs> then would you would you go over to Universal? No, Even no. They'd give you like pretty much everything you wanted. Would it go to Dark Side? No, except I w- they'd probably be hovering over you, right? Think, oh, no, I would not. That. I would not uh, want to do it again. I got other stories to tell. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I t- I try to convince okay, them well, to. I guess my my whole point to it though, <laughs> is that you know if uh, you know a major motion picture company wanted you to work on stuff with them, would you do it, or are you more trying to stay, do your own thing, have your own, have everything the way you want it, and um, stay with your own? I think the trick, and I heard someone say that I can't remember who said this, but the the trick and the fun of it is trying to get them to give you all this money so you can get what you want. Um, I think the more, the bigger the budget, the less control you'd have over it. Uh, I, I look to... Yeah, maybe Keanu Reeves would star in your movie, right? <laughs> no, I mean, I look to something like like um, A Ghost World is coming up. You know, the uh, the Dan Close comic book that Terry Zwigoff is is turning into a film and and him and and, and Dan Close worked on this a long time and they got Dane DeVito's uh, production company to to put up the funding and it it took them time to get it but I because it was such a a low budgeted project and they weren't asking for a lot in terms of you know special effects and stars and all that Good evening and welcome to another episode of the Telltale Heart on 91.9 KCSB in Santa Barbara. Galita's creepiest radio. Yes, I'm here with Chuck of Voodoo and the crazy leftist person. 
Clark track. And we are listening to the lovely spiritual leaders tonight. Uh, this is where I gain uh, all my knowledge of the uh, afterlife and uh, how to interact with the public. You're going to need to talk a little bit louder there, Chuck. Uh, I can't. I lost a lung this afternoon. I, you know, I was uh, smoking and driving. You know, you know uh, the downside to uh, uh, huffing gasoline and smoking at the same time is dangerous. Wanna oh, try the uh, methanol? Shout it good, yeah. Yeah, di- diesel. Cross, is that what they just said? No, no. You wanna try the methanol? That stuff just made out of um, uh, it's made out of corn. Out of what? Yeah, we. Uh, I'm all. I'm also starting to make some uh, alternative e- fuel. Ethanol. Like, e- 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 no. Met- no. Met- what is that thing that's made of corn? Uh, uh, that would be tortillas. That's moss. So yes, we are here to entertain you with these lovely religious singers tonight, which is quite frightening in itself, wouldn't you say? I'm feeling rather at peace myself. Oh, better stop that. So we have a horrifying story for you tonight. Oh God, it's creepy. And it's... Can I say it's based on a true story? No, I should probably shouldn't. That's probably... It's an absolutely true word-for-word word story. It's been recorded straight from the streets. It has. Put my hand in a stack of Bibles. I swear. I swear. Well, uh, you know what I do with a stack of Bibles is I get them up and I lather myself up in... Ah! Oh. We can't say that. Oh, the air. Chuck bone voodoo. Maybe on public access television you can demonstrate at some point. Can I just say something here about zombies? Oh, please. Zombies, yes. I think, that, I think the zombies are having a very uh, bad press. Why is that? I've met, I've met very, very nice zombies. Now, they're just like uh, you or myself. They're just missing some flesh. Uh, occasionally, one will come up to me and ask me for a bite. And, uh, a food on your body. Yes, feed on my body, but the way that the media portrays it is, is, is quite different from the actual reality. Uh, they they don't take a huge chunks out of your neck or you know bite off your arm or you know pull your so intestines out. No, that's just a, a, you know that's just a, a, a typical a, a, a typical propaganda from the the leftist media. Uh, I think I think what you're explaining is is the the new generation of zombies zombie light. Uh, is it, a product that uh, has uh, all the zombie with uh, one quarter of the calories. I mean, if, if if you didn't have as, as many zombies uh, joining the the various uh, freedom groups uh, as you as you have seen, uh, which of course is not reported, uh, then I I I I I I I I think you'd come with a different conclusion. Uh, 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 I just met a zombie yesterday. He he uh, asked me for a bite. As I was saying, he asked me for a bite of of just just a little nibble on my finger. And you know, this is my pinky, so I, I, so I hell, I don't use it that much. So he said, I, "Could I have some?" I said, yeah, "Sure." But I mean, did he just stop with that, or did he want? No, more? that's all he wanted. That's all he wanted. And you know, I just, uh, you know, he didn't want to rip off my arm. You know, we just gotta remember the children. Yeah, you, can, all, you know, it all comes down to these children. You can't, and you can't judge. Uh, children are the future. You you can't judge a, a, a being by the lack or or having of skin. That's Absolutely true. not. That reminds you, weren't you going to play a track from the, the Logan Brothers? Oh, Satan is real. Shall we play that right now? Testify. All right, we're going to play that, and then we're going to go into our horrifying story. Does that, does that work, kitties? Creepy. Creepy. Juby. Okay. Okay, here we go.